I'd like to say good morning to everyone. God bless you this morning. And to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come down in the name of Jesus. I give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Father, as you use me right now to teach your word, an uncompromising word, Father. Father, may your word go out to those who don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. And for those that are missing church, Father, thank you for putting it on my heart to bring the church school into their home. So, Father, for these next few minutes, have thy way, O Lord. You teach as I take my seat. That way your word will not return to you void. Father, you do the teaching, because I need to learn as well. I ask these things in Jesus' name, Father, and forgiveness of sin, Lord. Amen. I want to say good morning once again. Our church school lesson is for May the 10th, 2020. And our title for today's lesson is called, A New Day is Coming. A new day is coming. Now, if you have your church commentaries with you, your church school commentaries, it'll probably say, Peace and Justice Reign. Peace and Justice Reign. Our devotional reading will be coming from the book of Psalm, chapter 46. And our background passage is coming from Zechariah 8. And then our printed text is also coming from Zechariah chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And it moves down to verses 11 through 17. And our memory verse. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear not. And this is coming from Zechariah chapter 8, verses 15. And I'm reading from the King James Version. I want to welcome everyone to this church school lesson for May 10, 2020. And as always, let me give you a little introduction and a little background. Uh, we're going to be talking about one of the 12 minor prophets again. This one today is Zechariah. Uh, we'll give you a little background about this prophet. He was born in Babylon, and he worked alongside with Haggai. He was one of the few that were allowed to come back to Judah and Jerusalem to rebuild the city and to rebuild the temple. But his main purpose was to organize and encourage the people to finish building this temple. Because once they returned, they were so excited about being back home, they immediately went back to work and started putting the temple together, start putting the cities together. But with each day that passed, they started to lose motivation. They started to look, lose heart because they looked around and seen all this devastation and how big this job was. And if that wasn't enough, the people around them were ridiculing them and mocking them. And they stopped building the city. They stop working on God's temple. So God is using this prophet today to give them words of encouragement, to give them the motivation to complete the task. And another thing that is so special about Zechariah, God gave this man eight visions in one day. Eight visions. Not only did he give him these eight visions, he gave him an interpretation of these visions. If you go back and read Zechariah chapter 5, you'll see two visions in that chapter. One is where he visualized in the vision a huge giant scroll that he describes as being 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. And he has dialogue with an angel in this vision. He said, what is the symbol of this scroll? He said, this is the God's words are on this scroll. It's God's curse. Throughout the entire land. And God is going to go after those who have stole. And he's going after those who have been lying. And the penalty is going to be death. And then he saw another vision. It was a, va a vision of a basket in the sky. And he asked the angel again. Now what does the basket symbolize? He said this basket is used for measuring grain. But when the lid came off. Inside this basket sit a woman. And the angel told Zechariah the woman's name is wickedness. And he pushed the woman back down in the basket and he closed the lid back. And as Zechariah looked up again, he saw two women with wings flying toward them. And they swooped down and grabbed the basket and carried it off. Zechariah asked the angel, where are they carrying this basket? And the angel replied, they're carrying the basket to Babylonia. There, they are going to build a temple. And once the temple is complete, they are going to set this basket upon this pedestal. This is only two visions 
that the Lord gave him out of eight that I can only have time. But I want you to go back and read the book of Zechariah. It is a very powerful book. And it also foretells of the coming Messiah. 500 years before Jesus walked down here as our coming, resume coming Savior. Amen? So, with that said, let's move on into our lesson. Now, I want you to understand again, in this printed text, God is speaking to Zechariah to encourage the people who have stopped rebuilding the city and the temple. Verse 8, chapter 8, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus said the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus said the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, in truth and in righteousness. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people, as in the former days, said the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will call the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus said the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, said the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem, and to the house of Judah, fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these things that I hate, saith the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing, studying and doing of his holy word. Let's get into our lesson review or our lesson discussion. When we look at verses 1 and 3, 1 through 3 in chapter 8, this is Zechariah once again prophesizing what God had told him. Again, the Lord's message came to me. The Lord Almighty says, I am greatly concerned, yes, furiously angry, because of all that Jerusalem's enemies have done to her. Now I'm going to return to my land. And I myself will live within Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city, and the holy mountain, and the mountain of the Lord Almighty. I love the way Zechariah makes it abundantly clear in verse number one. Hey, this didn't come from me. God said this to me to say it to you. You see, God has always communicated to his people through his prophets. After being in exile for 70 years, After being captured by the Babylonians, God's people needed to hear a word of encouragement, which is now being given to them through this prophet, Zechariah. It was always thought that as long as the temple stood, God's spirit would dwell there. And since it had been long destroyed and all the items within had been carried away, the temple to them represented God's presence. But being that the temple wasn't there anymore, the people felt that God had abandoned them. Zechariah is now telling them in these three verses that God is coming back. It's a new day. It's a new day. God is coming back to live with you all. And you will see proof 
of his presence when he restores their city. Jerusalem will once again be the city where God dwells and his presence will be known by all of his people. God restores Jerusalem because he loves this city. Zechariah shows us in this passage that God not only loves people, but God seems to love places as well. And God has chosen Jerusalem to be the place to make his name well known. The people stop working on this temple and this city because it just seems so hopeless to complete such a huge job. Zechariah makes it known to them that to God, what seems impossible to y'all, it's not impossible for him. Because of his love for them, God is going to do for them what they have deemed too impossible to complete. Because of his love and his great power, Jerusalem will be known as the faithful city. It will be God's example of what he can do for a city that has lain in ruins for years. And he's going to turn this thing around and make this city glorious once again. This will be an example for God's faithfulness and a testament of him being a keeper of his word. Let's look at verses 4 through 8 where the Lord Almighty declares that Jerusalem will have peace and prosperity. And there will once again be old men and old women hobbling through her streets on canes. And the streets will also be filled with boys and girls at play. The Lord says, this seems unbelievable to you right now because y'all are small in numbers and y'all have become discouraged. To y'all it seems impossible, but to me it is no great thing. You can be sure that I will rescue my people from the east and from the west, wherever they are scattered. I will bring them back home again to live safely in Jerusalem, and they will be my people, and I will be their God, a just God, and a true God, and I will be forgiving them for their sins. In giving people this new hope, in giving people this encouragement, in letting them know that this new day is coming, Zechariah tells of his vision of God blessing them, by telling them of a street who will be filled with people once again, both the elderly and the young. They don't see it right away because don't forget, they are still looking at all this devastation and they're looking at them being small in number. But God has promised that there will be more builders and he will bring back many of those who are still in exile. He tells of children laughing and playing in these streets again. The elderly will be able to walk around without having any fears of their, for their safety. This promise of more people coming back home was motivation for them to continue the work of them rebuilding the city and this temple. God was telling them it's time for them to get back to work because I have a reward waiting for you. This is in verses 9 and 10. That's not in your lesson. He said, y'all have listened to enough from the prophets that I have sent you. The foundation has been laid for what y'all are supposed to do. Y'all are to complete the assignment that I have given y'all, or you will not be able to receive the blessings that I have stored away from you. But if y'all choose to give up, there is no chance. I don't know that I will be able to allow y'all to come back again. Because once again, you will be showing God your disobedience. And if you choose to leave, the neighboring nations around you will come into the city and start looting, murdering, and all sorts of crime. So stay there. Finish the assignment that I have given you. Then once you do this, I will be able to give you these blessings that I have waiting for you. In Zechariah 11 through 17, chapter 8, 11 through 17, God goes on to say, but it is all so different now. See, now God is working. This is what God is going to do. For I am sowing peace and prosperity among you. Your crops will prosper. The grapevines will be weighed down with fruit. The ground will be fertile with plenty of rain. All these blessings will be given to the people left in the land. May you be as poor as Judah, the heathen used to say to those they cursed. But no longer 
It's a new day. It's a new day. For now Judah is a word of blessing, not a curse. May you be as happy and prosperous as Judah is what they'll all say now. So don't be afraid. Don't get discouraged. Get on with rebuilding the temple. If you do, I will certainly bless you. And don't think that I might change my mind about this. Didn't I do what I said I would do? When your fathers angered me and I had to punish them? Well, since I didn't change my mind about that, guess what? I'm not changing my mind about this decision of mine to bless you. Here is your part. Once the city is restored, once the temple is rebuilt, I want y'all to continue to tell the truth. I want y'all to continue to be fair. I want y'all to continue to live at peace with everyone. I don't want you plotting harm to others. Don't swear that something is true when you know in your heart that it's not. Oh, how I hate all of these things, say the Lord. The people in Judah need to realize that a new day is coming. Only if they believe what Zechariah has interpreted for them from the Lord. God's punish for them, punishment for them is now over. It is time for restoration. But God is not going to let them just sit back and give up. He is encouraging them to finish what they started in order for him to reward them in the end. Because of God's love for them, he is going to replenish their crops by making the ground fertile and by giving these plants plenty of rain. Once again, God promised them that they will be known as a nation with dignity. They will be a nation of integrity. They will be a nation of honor and no longer one that has been mocked and has been shamed. These blessings will serve as a motivation for them to finish rebuilding the temple. God also reminds them that although he is going to do his part, there is still something that they must do when the restoration began and when it is in. First, treat each other with justice. In your courts, make sure everybody gets truth and justice. Then he goes on and tells them, do not revert back to your old ways that led you being taken away in the first place. If you treat each other with love and respect, then God will continue to give you peace and blessings as he lives among his people. And he also tells them, don't stand by a lie. If you know in your heart it's not the truth, don't back somebody up this line about it. And let me close by saying this. I know right now in this world we're all going through something, but if we would just trust God and look toward the heavens and ask God to give you strength during this trying time, He's already gave you blessings. He woke you up this morning. But if you continue to put your focus on him and not your circumstances, sit back and watch God would, what God will do. He can restore this world. He created it. God is talking about there will come a time where the old men and women and the children will still be in the streets once the restoration has taken place. I look forward to that day, my brothers and sisters. When we can come back out of our houses with no fear. When we can go back inside the church and worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. But until that day comes, keep your focus on God. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And as I end every lesson, trust in the Lord. And that is your church school lesson for May 10th, 2020. God bless you, everyone.